Hello and welcome to this interactive Python data visualization tutorial and today we're going to be looking at the Bokeh library which is really powerful as you see here flexible interactive and for that interactivity element um, it sort of outshines the likes of Plotly, Seaborn and Matplotlib uh, which are also commonly used for data visualization in Python. Now I'm just here on the Bokeh website, which you can find at docs.bokeh.org. I just wanted to point out there is a great amount of user guides. There's demos, they um, host these code repositories. So for example, for this movie scatterplot in GitHub, um, there's even a, a Jupyter Notebook sort of tutorial walkthrough that's very comprehensive. So we won't be making something to this level, uh, quite frankly, because just that would be very time consuming. Um, but we're going to be able to get a really well performing um, a nice scatter plot very quickly. And I'm going to show you how. And it's great for things like exploratory um, data analysis. Before we dive, really dive into things, we can get a feel for things like correlation, trends and so on. So that's just the, uh, the um, tutorial Jupyter Notebook as well, which is very handy. So first of all, feel free to check out the documentation if you've not used Bokeh before. Now we're going to go through my Google Colab Notebook, which is essentially, um, I want to make this as friendly for people who are not used to using Python IDEs. Um, it's essentially just a hosted Jupyter Notebook, and we can do everything within here um, very easily and segment our code. And this is this would be a good use case for working through exploring our data um, that we may be taking through pandas um, and then visualizing it quickly on the fly for trends. So I'm just importing the dependencies at any point. You can feel free to stop um, and take a look. If you haven't installed it, you may need to use conda or pip install bokeh. Now we need to enable an output for our plots. So that's why I've just used output underscore notebook in the parenthesis and we can just run that and that will successfully allow us to view those data visualizations within our Google Colab notebook or Jupyter notebook, whatever you're using. You can also use output underscore file to send this to another web page. And that's very handy. And when we're working with, because you can integrate this with websites, with notebooks, and with Python frameworks like Kivi and Django as well. So it's worth noting that the data set I used was the income and happiness correlation within Kaggle, a good fit for a scatter plot, um, and this use case to make some quick analysis, look at correlation trends. And you can download that for free. As you can see, here's the, the web page. You can feel free to pause. Um, and we can go back into our environment and view how this looks when we pull it into pandas. So if you remember earlier, we imported pandas in under the common alias PD. So we can just read the CSV of that happy score underscore income file and assign it to the um, convenient alias correlation. So you can see there's a number of metrics or columns here. We've got satisfaction, but what we're actually interested in is whether there's a correlation between average income and that happiness score. So that's what we'll focus on. We also have countries. It's measured by country. We have the regions that they're grouped into. That could be helpful. Other things like median income. So if you do download this file, you can feel free to explore and explore it within Bokeh if you want the practice. Another thing I'm going to do, just like I have here in Google Colab, I'll activate dark mode. This just this is a um, has been defined by Bokeh, so we can just use dark minimal to get a sort of automatic dark mode by just using curdoc, the parenthesis dot theme is equal to dark underscore minimal, and we'll be able to get that. So looking at the actual first, we're gonna essentially go through three iterations um, of scatter chart. Look how simple it is to start and go into some of the more specifics, and by the third iteration, have quite a clean end result. So here, we're just saying that our scatter is equal to and we need a figure because that creates a model and um, that includes methods for adding different kinds of glyphs which are just shapes so in our case that's a circle um, and that will allow us to create a scatter so we've just got a title here um, and then within the circle we use the happy score on one axis the average income on the y-axis we state our source which was that correlation variable that's a csv um, and we give an alpha and a size so essentially we're we're playing around with the size and the uh, the color, the density of the markers. But to show this, we actually have to click, uh, we actually have to type 
show and then scatter the name and um, within parenthesis the name of our scatter plot and that will produce this which was remarkably easy to create um, with a few lines of python but there's a lot more that we can do to improve on this so one thing we'll notice is that we didn't have access labels we didn't have tooltips so we can actually create some tooltips here um, and we can just specify the country and the at in front of the country just references that that is a column within our data and we can do the same with the region where country and region is the accompanying text for our tooltip so when we hover over we'll be able to actually look at the country and how they're performing with that correlation um, so we also again can work on our figure and um, which is the main plotting instance so we can actually specify a width and height our title and our tooltips is just going to reference that va variable and i just want one tool on the side this time and that's tap as you can see now in the circle you can see i've changed the color and i have changed um, some other aspects as well i've changed the size of the markers back to be slightly smaller because the the scatter is quite dense in some areas um, and we also have those nice labels the color is a lot nicer in the dark mode and obviously the tooltips are very helpful we could go further and sort of group um, the color of the markers into regions. We could have banding, uh, we could have best fit lines or regression lines um, to demonstrate sort of um, correlation. So how could we improve our scatter in this third um, and, and final example in this tutorial? Um, so the first thing we could do is we can actually use HTML code and tooltips to make them a bit more intuitive. We can mix some hard coding uh, with the dynamic column values for country and region um, to make things a bit easier on the eye for users. Now we can also adjust the plot, so the general area, and make the width and the height bigger. And we can take that toolbar um, and place it at the top beside the title. And maybe we just want the save tool, which actually allows us to um, save a PNG image of our graph, which could be very helpful for presentations and things. Now we're not using circle, we're using triangle here. So we're changing the shape to triangle of our markers. We've got the orange, but we can actually also apply an outline of fire brick. Now I'm actually removing any grid lines and I'm assigning some navy banding to our scatter chart on the Y axis, which makes things a bit easier to see. So as you can see, we have the title with that save icon um, and our tooltip uh, at the top. We can now hover over um, icons and see our markers and see the relevant HTML tooltip. We have nice detail, we can save PNGs, we've got a good level of uh, titles with our axis, X and Y axis titles also. And it's quite clear. Again, there's a lot of improvements. We can make this more interactive and um, share it to different resources. But for now, it's a great way to explore your data um, and highlight things in a really intuitive manner. As usual, if you like this content, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe and share. Thank you.